This is factually untrue. As examples, I humbly submit microscopic organisms, disco, and my sense of self-esteem. How's he gonna find his dick? It's invisible. Random teenage film connoisseur would be excellent at superhero genitalia sense. If this area is protected by the Seven, who the f is still robbing banks and armored trucks? Queen Maeve stopped the truck from hitting the kids. Awesome. Wow. But she didn't stop the multiple parts of the truck now flying towards the kids, which could be equally as dangerous. I'm not sure in a hostage situation that melting one gun when there's still another one pointed at children is a helpful move. Are these superheroes corrupt and stupid? Considering all of the movies and merchandising based around the Seven, there is zero chance this asshat doesn't know that Homelander is invincible to bullets. So this is just wasted ammunition. Let's hook you up with 1000 meg HDMI. Let's go with this one. Uh, it costs a little bit more, but the carbon's way more conductive. Upselling the overpriced HDMI cables. Also carbon shadowing. Hey. Don't you ever besmirch Billy. This show spends the first five minutes investing us in this relationship just to take it away with one of the most grotesque and bold holy shit moments in the history of TV pilots. Right from the start, this show knows what it is and refuses to let up. Whether it works long term or not, this is sin removal territory for sure. In case you confused it with Des Moines Republic of the former Soviet Union. Using an alarm clock to wake up and introduce your new character, even though everyone now uses their phone for that cliche. Next, we will see her lifting a car and punching through a wall, so why would she be straining at doing a pull-up, even with one arm? Also, I get that Starlight does have superhuman strength like the rest of the soups, but her main power is the blinding light thing, so why wouldn't she be highlighting that in her training montages? You should turn away from the camera and you should close your eyes or else I'll blind you. Shouldn't you just have her set the camera up and leave the room? Wouldn't that be the safer route? She took me to all the little Miss Hero pageants, but I hated it. This character backstory exposition via interview is so nakedly forced and uninspired it might as well be narration. My deepest condolences. The real superpower here is how TV and movies have convinced audiences that people seeing relevant information on random news broadcasts that just happen to be on a random television with the volume up is a normal occurrence. I mean, it's not as good a power as flight or invisibility, but it's probably at least above controlling the weather. All you have to do is sign right here and I'll offer you the check. You might not actually get the check, but I will offer it to you. Get the hell out! This character overreacts, but gotcha, it's fake moment maybe kind of worked the first few thousand times, but now I'm so used to it that I just assume nothing is real and therefore have a hard time investing in any character actions at all. It's like that one Aesop fable where the wolf got so sad about the sheep he was hunting that he just couldn't stop crying. Hello. Yes, this is she. Although, zero clue how Starlight can hear anyone on the other end with a hoodie and the sheer amount of that hair between her ear and the phone. This is a lot of money, Huey. We could really use it. Living off your child. You don't have to fight. You never have. I'm sorry, but it's, it's true. Neither do I. Clearly. I mean, that sweater is not the sweater of a fighter. Remington Steele's on. I think you mean Remington Steele is ending, considering you're watching credits. Unless, of course, this up next says Remington Steele, which wouldn't matter because that wasn't even there when you said it. Unless, unless, of course, it's a Remington Steele marathon, or you do this every day, in which case, that's good enough for a sin by itself. I get that they're about to introduce Starlight as the newest member of the Seven, but this is a shareholders meeting, and that is a large crowd. At a f***ing shareholders meeting. Let's take a look. Oh, good. Even more exposition. This time via promotional video at a shareholders meeting. Shows do know they can spread that stuff out through the season, right? A world without crime. Wait, Elizalia Tomshu is both hosting this meeting and doing the voiceover on the video? Shouldn't a big company like this hire a professional for that? We see a bright future ahead where there is a Vought hero in every town. But why isn't there already a hero in every town? We find out that they don't come cheap from Vought, but there seem to be enough around that it's a common thing. I mean, what city wouldn't want their streets to be crime-free? Except for Boston, of course, because, I mean, it's Boston. Do they still do IP-based serials? I thought that was like an 80s thing. And it really only ever worked for Mr. T, so this cereal aisle is a lie. Also, frosted A-trains? Wouldn't it make more sense for him to partner with an instant cereal like Cream of Weed or Quaker Oats? A-trains quicker Quaker Oats seems like your best bet to me. How are you able to, to vanish? No, I don't actually vanish. My skin turns into this carbon metamaterial that bends the light. Like an invisibility cloak. More carbo shadowing, and this time through Jimmy Fallon. Fallon shadowing is always a sin. We've now seen Simon Pegg and Carl Urban, and this show is now a Chris Pine and a close-up of Uhura's feet away from being Quentin Tarantino's Star Trek movie. This pan around not Times Square consists of solely Vought-owned superhero properties. Do people in this universe not need cars, or makeup, or overpriced Broadway shows? The main reason that you won't hear about it is because the public don't want to know about it. And that's why I'm comfortable talking loudly about all my secret shit in the crowded part of the city.
flies wide shut. Also, levitation sex is probably supremely disappointing. I'm guessing it has all the letdown of waterbed sex, but without the cool sloshy sounds. Pardon my French, f those f***ers. That's not French and you know it. Do you know who my favorite musician is? Who? James Taylor. Number two, Simon and Garfunkel. Number three, Billy Joel. I would have an easier time believing this if the person in question hadn't been wearing a Nirvana t-shirt this whole time. I'm not as mad that TV continues to convenience characters into random meetups as I am that they continue to do it on park benches. Who sits on park benches? Those things are nasty and meant for super secret spy meetups or people waiting for buses with boxes of chocolates. Leaving the seat up. That's right, taking a stand on the big issues today. Bravery comes in many forms. These assholes pirated my movie three weeks before release, and you can't walk down Fifth Avenue without bumping into a table of unlicensed Homelander shirts. Nothing makes a superhero show more exciting than scenes of shareholder meetings and the heroes complaining about losing money to pirates. Black Noir, let's start with you, man. Noir already means black or dark, so basically this would be like a superhero named Red Rojo or Blue Blau or Ineffective Congress. The only thing more unbelievable than this giant corporation agreeing to this meeting is that they would willfully hold it in this room. It's a big building, and I'm guessing there's at least one decent area that doesn't cause this large of a security risk. What the f It's a good question. I would counter that question with one of my own. Why wouldn't Translucent stop and question Huey here instead of tracking him down later in a public place? Cities is a thorny enough issue as it is. Earlier in this episode, all these TVs were showing the same lion family, but now this one is suddenly engaged in some more flagrant news position. And I know you're thinking it might be the TV that Fallon just happened to be on earlier, but nope, that one's closer to the wall. Also, I'm throwing in an extra sin for making me think of Jimmy Fallon again. We wouldn't dare play the music here, but I'm still giving the show a sin for being yet another victim of not realizing there are Clash songs not called London Calling or Should I Stay or Should I Go. <laughs> Honestly, that's pretty funny. But there is no way Aomer expectorated that much spit in one bloody loogie. Translucent doesn't even mean invisible. That means semi-transparent. Consulting the Urban Dictionary. Technically, I'm not a fade. What? How is this surprising at all to Huey? We are supposed to be rooting for this idiot, right? You hear that? That's the old Bill. Referring to the police as the old Bill. You sound like you're from London. So unless you want to explain why you got America's favorite invisible wanker dead on the floor. Holding Pee Wee Herman's visibility against him. You got a problem, you call me, I solve a problem. Well, it sounds like you didn't actually solve the problem. That's an unfortunate trunk pounding to happen right during your sales pitch, Billy. What is that? Hearing what sounds like a human being banging from inside your trunk and asking this question from the exact car where you moments ago placed a human being inside your trunk. Touching someone else's face. For that matter, touching your own face. Do you know how dirty your hands are? Seriously, when you pet your dog, I bet you're worried about picking up germs, but honestly, it's the dogs who should worry about us. Oi, Francie! Nicknaming your gun runner after a beauty school dropout. How would you like to double your money? A double of zero is zero. Frenchie would be the Frenchiest at TV sins. You got translucent in your trunk, huh? Getting translucent in your trunk is definitely a sin. That will expose all your sh I'm sorry. I asked for translucent. In what world do they not tell this kid that they had to change up the superhero visit? I get that the superheroes are assholes in this world, but are the medical care workers too? The live stream viewership starts to tank at the exact moment the oops wrong hero cringe kicks in. And do you even internet bro? Cringe is where the ratings magic happens. Gen Z baby! Giving Maeve the hint of nipples on her sculpture suit, but keeping Homelander's suit nipple free. Either go full Schumacher or don't. I like to do my own investigating. Conspiracy culture. The deep is coming. My shocked response to almost every single scene involving the deep somehow makes it into the episode. People love a team up. Joss Whedon's Justice League needs to have a conversation with you, Ashley. If you use the $10 as an S, an I, and an O, you could change this to say, tease the penis nuts, yo. And honestly, I'm ashamed for the young people in this neighborhood for not doing it. That stuff really blocks the cheap signal. I mean, maybe. But even if it does, what about the walls, vents, or any recorded location data it might have already sent out? This is a tinfoil band-aid, and tinfoil band-aids suck. You just dropped the Moby fucking dick of problems on my plate. So it's the problem you've been obsessively hunting down your whole life? And why is it on your plate? I think Frenchie may need some metaphor lessons. All right, I bet we suffocate him. Some Dominicans already tried this way back 07. And what happened? They're all f***ing dead. That's what happened. 
Right, but what happened? It's frustrating enough that this isn't an answer to what Butcher asks, but even more frustrating, the Butcher just accepts this yada yada bullshit when he should be following up on why suffocation wouldn't work. You're gonna kill him? What did Huey think they were going to do? I really want to like this character, but writing him as this naive makes it really hard sometimes. You're talking about randomly killing one of the most famous men on the planet. Randomly? No. This killing would be of a specific man at a specific time. Recklessly, sure. Arbitrarily, fine. But not randomly. Words mean something, Huey. You can't get A-Train if you're a greasy smear on the pavement. <laughs> Actually, that might be a perfect way to get A-Train. If you're greasy enough, it can provide a banana peel-esque pratfall. And with A-Train going at full speed, his head hitting the pavement would pop that sucker like a balloon. Just saying, if you need a backup plan. Oh, come on, Madeline. You do not need to hide things from me. Nor could she. How does anyone hide anything from the guy that can basically see and hear anything he wants to? Gods are pure and they're perfect. Madeline needs a crash course on Greek mythology. Zeus was basically a horn dog that would turn himself into all sorts of animals just to do sexy time with humans. And that's just one of them. You're leaking. Thank you. What the f*** is this scene? I hate it when shows try to do phone interfaces. In what world does a phone not give you at least the time info of each of these calls? And more likely, wouldn't it just lump them together into a single notification that says you've missed 27 calls from dad who doesn't have a picture on his contact card for some reason? As Boimler chats with Scotty, McCoy decides to trek this gun all the way out to this counter to set it up for maximum dramatic effect. Huey's hand survived this. They built a 7 right into their headquarters, which... Cool, I guess, but it also kind of limits you from ever expanding the lineup if you want to really capitalize. You're setting yourself up for a 14 teams in the Big Ten situation, and there's nothing you can do about it now. Also, what if you want to sell the building? I used to live in a town where the Solo Cup company built a giant two-story concrete Solo Cup right into the side of the building and had a hard time selling it. The final negotiations included a giant ping pong ball, but that's a story for another day. What is it with just leaving all these screens on and running all the time? It looks like pretty detailed and important information back there that nobody ever seems to use, but is just available to anyone who comes in. If it's for decoration, wouldn't you go with like some flying toasters or something? Rounds coated in the same carbon metamaterial as his skin. But if you can actually manufacture the material his skin is made of, then why isn't everyone just wearing a translucent suit for protection? Oh no, not a tear in the tinfoil. Is it a tear that's just specifically big enough to give Vaught a general location without letting them know exactly where Translucent is? You bet it is. Oh wow, what a surprise, a water crime. I get he's being sarcastic, but he shouldn't be surprised at all. Someone had to tell him where to be, so he knew before he got there it was a dock. Oh, so you're the water guy, dude. Get over it. This would be like the best pilot in the world being upset they always make him fly planes and never give him submarine duty. You're just... The fish guy. That's marine biologist. Hello. Why are they running drugs in these dolls? Either A, they're buying actual Homelander dolls and then unboxing them and inserting drugs and reboxing them, or B, they're making their own detailed Homelander dolls with voice technology. Either way, this is a lot of effort to smuggle mostly air in something that would be easily beaten by an x-ray. Hey, boys. Now I'm confused as to how the water played a part in this at all. Feels like there are other ways he could have gotten to the other side of the warehouse without swimming. Yeah, stand over him and say this is lit. They bring camera crews to all the crime scenes before the criminals have been apprehended? Isn't that insanely dangerous? Makes you wonder how many innocent cameramen and mic guys have been murdered because of this tactic. I'm guessing at least a few. Come on. Susan. Five minutes alone with a piece of paper. For old times sakes, and I want to know. I mean, we don't kink shame, but the paper cuts alone, man. Don't do it. Did I mention this is life or death? I'll send an edible arrangement to a funeral. Susan says this like it's a bad thing. There's nothing inappropriate about sending edible arrangements to a funeral, right? Right? Oh man, I think I know why most of my friends who have lost loved ones don't call me anymore. I thought you might be thirsty, so... I brought you some water in a glass without thinking that maybe that could be a dangerous idea. My brain stops working when I feel empathy. Buddy, my superpower in invisibility, it's reading people. Watching them when they think they're alone. Which you can only do because of your invisibility. Water balloon filled with blood and meat. Core shadowing. This guy breaks a window, looks around with a flashlight, and then moves on from the exact kind of place the translucent might be in. They used to say when I was growing up that TV makes you stupid, and I'm just now realizing they might have been talking about the characters. Spaghetti. Boy, they're blowing so much smoke up Maeve's ass. It's a miracle she doesn't die of lung cancer. Colon cancer seems more likely in that case, but 
Sure, Senator, the rectum leads to the lungs, since politicians are clearly the experts on how women's bodies work. Everyone loves to bask in their glow. But tomorrow morning, no one's putting soups in the national defense. It's lucky for Madeline that Senator Calhoun opened his big mouth because now she can conveniently set him up with doppelganger and get the blackmail pictures before he hits the Senate floor with his decision. Miss, do me a favor and shut your eyes. Telegraphing your superpower. <laughs> Not preparing yourself after a superpower has been telegraphed. That feels different. See, the joke is that the shapeshifter shifted to a man to take pictures the senator wouldn't want released. But couldn't they have just shifted the parts that would be seen in the picture and left the, the other parts the same? And if it does feel different down there, how is the senator also not feeling the extra weight in the contact area? Having to see a nature special on turtles to get the obvious idea, what if we go through an orifice on the guy with impenetrable skin? I need him unconscious. Why? Because I got it. But Frenchie isn't going to tell Billy or Huey his plan yet because we need to be surprised. It's as if he knows he has a TV audience he needs to keep in suspense. Whatever these candies are. You shiver when you orgasm, sir. I mean, who doesn't? Also, if this is Doppelganger's natural look, why would he choose that in the blackmail picture? It's not fatal to be a homosexual these days. It is in Oklahoma, sir. Oklahoma. No one wants your f***ing soups in the army? No one? Sure, I can see some politicians being loyal to gun manufacturers and the like, but I don't believe that no one would be interested in seeing the soups in military scenarios. I also can't believe this is the first senator Stillwell is blackmailed into her pocket. Maybe they don't get enough votes, but they sure as hell would be getting more than none. So how do you get to the squishy inside? Through the mouth, no? The stomach acid, the gag reflex. Okay, I'm gonna stop you there, Frenchie. You lot have been attempting to kill Translucent in a variety of ways, and you haven't been shy about it. When you thought you had a bullet, you just marched in and shot it at him. So don't give me this stomach acid gag reflex sh He was unconscious. So the number of ways you could have killed him through his nose, mouth, or anus easily and quickly without using a bomb are countless. Nope, you, and by you I mean the show, just wanted a way that would be super disgusting and also have Huey have to be the one to make the choice. Wait, 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 just... Ask anything. Boring AMAs. Oh my. You've still got a bomb in your butt that you can't pull out without setting it off, so Homelander or not, you're still in quite a pickle. Well, actually, the pickle's in you, but you know what I mean. So even if I did believe that Huey was dumb enough to leave a glass in with a prisoner, there's no way in the, let's just say, intimate way they implanted that bomb that either Frenchie or Butcher didn't see it there and immediately confiscate it. First, even if a bit of urine somehow shorted out a freaking car battery, and let's just say that's doubtful, if it's just a simple slide lock on that thing, why hasn't he just bumped it with the glass or just withstood the shock for a second or two to quickly flip it open? I can't show you because, well, it's really gross, but the amount of viscera that lands on Huey is so concentrated and thick that there's no explanation for how the walls, all directly around the location of Translucent's interior redecoration, barely have just a slight case of splatter. I mean, that thing completely wrecked him. Also, shouldn't his meat and blood balloon have stayed intact on the exterior? It's either impossible or super convenient for the effects team that his skin is only impenetrable from the outside, and honestly, I don't care which. Me forgetting I shouldn't have started this episode with a mouthful of food. Okay, perhaps not strictly the show's fault, but someone's getting punished for the meatball sub with extra sauce that I'm still going to eat, but feel very weird about doing so now. Also, yeah, 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 Huey got gooeyed, but what I'm really concerned about is this circle. Did someone set something so hot in the sink that it scorched the metal? Did someone spill black paint on the bottom of a coffee cup? Did the aliens from Arrival try to leave us a coded message to end all war, pain, and famine? This is important. Sorry about all the... Uh, don't be stupid. You did us a favor. Did he, though? Surely there was more intel they could have extracted from Translucent. And as bad as his escape would have been for the crew, Huey had him by the balls. Well, by the... Never mind, he had him cornered. So did he have to pull the trigger on the enhanced cavity search? Either he goes with you, or I break your legs. False dichotomies. Translucent ski needs one burn, huh? Where are you gonna stash it? Homelander can't find it. Nowhere. Nowhere? Look, if you want Homelander to find the remains so you can send him a vague yet possibly incriminating message, that's fine. But don't make it out like this is your only option. The tracking device is out of the picture, and if it's just his invisible skin you're worried about, there are a billion places you could hide it. It's invisible! Come on in. Holy sh! that was quick. This office is huge, so is Ashley just perpetually waiting by the door in case someone knocks? It is fantastic. You're pulling through the roof. Why does everyone seem so shocked that people would dig it when a superhero protects someone in need? I get you're all cynical, but cynicism and stupidity are not the same thing. Now, small town Iowa girl. Casting Malcolm Barrett just to pour salt in my better off Ted wounds. This show rundown is a mess. 
First off, based on how it's highlighted, I'd think the current topic would be NBA and soups, and then the topics would be progressing downward. But discount every sports center anchor ever here is clearly talking about the race already. Speaking of which, why are tomorrow's big race, event of the century, and super versus super all in a row when they're covering the same thing? Shouldn't the goal be to put as many different things in the rundown to keep people watching? This progression tells me nothing about why I should stick around. I just want to be teased properly. And finally, does SportsCenter only cover superhero topics now? Are there no regular ass sports to cover? Where will I get my cornhole filled? Okay, I was lying when I said finally because the bullshit continues on. According to these numbers, Shockwave is over 30 miles per hour faster than A-Train. That's not a close race. Shockwave would have a mile on him within the first couple of minutes. And finally, of course, news position. I am angry and I am throwing things. My anger is making me destroy everything. It's this keyboard's fault and these posters. Grr, anger. Cliche. I have never told you how much I hate sitting on that couch staring at the TV like we're already dead. Kids? How much I f***ing hate pizza rolls. Now you love pizza rolls. When I was seven! Abandoning your love of pizza rolls? Which means that you have cut in line in front of everybody else in here. Mother Spilk is chastising these two for not putting their names in a time slot, but he didn't exactly make this easy for anyone. If this clock is correct, and there's no reason to assume it isn't, ping time hasn't even started yet. It's 11 a.m. and the first time slot's at 2.20 p.m. Are they just hanging around here for three hours until it's time to ping their pongs? I'm actually making progress with these boys. Yeah, so I can see. Perfectly timed fight is perfectly timed to perfectly undermine Mother's Milk's point with impeccable perfect timing. Funny you should mention making a difference, because we just dusted a soup. Butcher wastes everyone's time here by using nostalgia to convince M.M. to get back into the game instead of just opening with a piece of information he knows will grab his interest. He buries the lead so far up his own arse that Translucent's invisible bits are twitching. Boom, Clara everywhere, f***ing diabolical. Butcher says f***ing diabolical cliche. And no, that's not just because I enjoy saying f***ing diabolical. That would be a f***ing diabolical reason to give a sin out. F***ing diabolical, I tells ya. This is about Becca, isn't it? Of course it's about f***ing Becca. Why would I even need to say this? I don't even know who Becca is or what happened to her, but the fact that Mother's Milk has known Butcher for years and Butcher is still hunting soups suggests that the thing that's driving him still hasn't been resolved. This is just so the audience knows it's about Becca's murder slash kidnapping slash splattening or whatever. It'll be different, this go, all right? Nice. Secrets and lies, bollocks. Mother's Milk believes this, or isn't self-aware enough to recognize his own desire to believe this and stay the f*** away with his wife and kid. Are you bringing Frenchie back? Misquoting Justin Timberlake songs. Frenchie, no, I ain't seen him in years. Mother's Milk believes this, or isn't self-aware. Look, I love this guy, but he is way more trusting than I think his experience should allow. Who do you think I am? Some double O wanker. Wank shaming. There's nothing wrong with going for the double O, butcher. Anything above a quadruple O might be a bit excessive, but it's like we're always saying, you do you as many times as you like. Listen, you two knows. kiss and make up, yeah? And they will immediately make up, despite tearing chunks out of each other a few seconds ago and nothing really changing or being resolved since then, other than the show's desire for the boys to start the boysing. Also, a TV show called The Boys takes two episodes in 18 minutes to actually The Boys. I don't care if this is a camera or a microphone, there's no practical benefit to extending it by two inches. A couple extra inches can be helpful in some situations, but not from this distance. Every desktop, every smart TV in the house has a camera on it. There are currently five smart TVs in my house and none of them have a camera built into them, you liar. And yes, this was just a way to brag that I have five televisions. How else am I supposed to watch Drag Race while I'm in the shower? And we can get you all the way up to 1,000 Mbps. <laughs> Why didn't he just say a gigabyte per second instead of this 1,000 Mbpsbs? It feels like this was Huey's attempt to blind Popclaw with science, and we're supposed to believe he's patronizing enough to think this would work. I mean, it does work, but it shouldn't have worked, and look, it just sounds dumb and I hate it. Setting your desktop wallpaper for ultimate expositional story impact. No recycling bin is ever empty. Ever. That's just the rules. And if you want to prove me wrong, feel free to send a screenshot to I just emptied my recycling bin and took a screenshot to prove a point to some guy on the internet at idontbelieveyou.com. Having a spindle of burnable discs in the year of our Lord 2019. This kid is full of surprises. Huey pulls off the spying through webcams plan far too easily. And that's what I'm choosing to believe so that I can continue on safe in the knowledge that my privacy is real while I watch Drag Race in the shower. Ooh, excuse me, but Setting your surprise hallway encounters for ultimate expositional story impact. This minute-long fight scene has over 50 cuts in it, including some repeated frames, which I completely understand considering the bats are bending like rubber chickens on every swing. 
Honestly, they might as well have used rubber chickens as much of a joke as this training fight is. Also, other than giving me vertigo, what is this edited to death scene doing for Maeve? I'm assuming this is some sort of training situation, but why? She has super strength, is invulnerable to most forms of harm, and can f***ing fly, so how is a bit of wrestling with three mortal men helping her hone her craft? Yui, how's the beeping? How's the beeping, Huey? Yui, Frenchy, Butchy, Milky. Why don't you just tell me where the V is, please? Not knowing where your girlfriend's V is. What the hell is Compound V? Well, it starts as a bit of a MacGuffin to drive the plot, but then becomes the central storyline, whose use and effect changes as the story needs it to evolve. Oh, was that not what you meant? Yeah, well, whatever it was, he was juiced on it when he murdered Robin. I think you mean manslaughtered Robin? Words are important, Huey. So translucent, huh? How the f*** did you pull that off? He f didn't. It was Frenchie's idea. Why are we all pretending that it was Huey's genius that killed Translucent? The last thing I ever said to Robin was, don't you ever besmirch Billy Joel. That was the last thing that she heard before she burst into pieces. And it was funny. And you were laughing together. Look, clearly it was traumatic for you, but it's not like you were cussing her out right before she disintegrated. And she died immediately, so there was no pain or anything. Get over yourself, man. Shoehorning puns. He reaches speeds in excess of a thousand miles per hour. Does he? Because earlier ESPN said he clocked at exactly the speed of sound, which is about 770 miles per hour. I know sports people. My friend Justin knows the VORP of every first baseman in the American League down to the second decimal. I thought the VORP was an alien race on one of those Space Trek shows. My point is sports people don't mess up stats. Not putting your talent under their own poster. Look, when the line gets this big, the poster helps you understand who you're actually in line for and prevents that awkward moment when you realize you're in the wrong person's line and then have to shuffle into the back of the correct person's line where you still have to eventually make eye contact with the person whose line you were originally in when they realize they aren't the person you came to see. Not that that's ever happened to me. Ever. <laughs> Using your hand instead of the built-in zipper. Using AF as shorthand when you're typing makes sense, but it's the same amount of syllables when said out loud as as f so you're not saving any time. And I don't for a second believe it's because this asshole gives AF about swearing in public. If I ever really thought that you'd fall in for someone else, I just, I don't think I could handle it. One note, Sociopathic Homelander is my least favorite Homelander. The saga of the shoddiest sports show summary conceived continues as somehow, since arriving at the event, Shockwave has managed to lose time on his season best, and A-Train has managed to improve both his personal and season best times. That's impossibly impressive. Annie? Annie? Annie, hi! Huey conveniently noticing that Starlight is Annie, the fact that they've conveniently met before, and that all of this conveniently happens just as Frenchie is about to be exposed is really f***ing funny, actually. I love Frenchie. But it's still really f***ing convenient, too. No V. Must have it somewhere else. Why would the team assume it was there in the first place? A-Train was clearly being secretive about it, so why would he have left it in the f***ing locker room that anyone working with Vought can apparently get into? It was 14 seconds ago in Showtime that they left the locker room door, and they're now already seated with beers and nachos. And this sin is for rubbing my face in every 40-minute nacho line in every sports ball park of every sports ball game ever. Oh, cool! They're using the microphones with the Create Static Before Shutting Off button. I should probably get back, you know, before they set a search party for me. Then why did you order a full pint of f***ing beer, Pippin? They come in halves, you know. I know you're you and everything, but if you ever just wanted to, you know, get... Would you like my number? Ah, yes. All it took was the power of boners to help Huey Clueless and Bemused over here to move on from his recently deceased Billy Joel besmirching ex-girlfriend. He must have shut up the V. We missed the boys. But fortunately for you, Mother's Milk will choose this moment to check cameras, while Popclaw also chooses this moment to whip out the stash of V. And yes, I know it's because MM already suspected the red bag was a drug stash, but it's still all of the convenient AF BS that this worked out so perfectly. I'm out of here. I'll check in later. What is going on here? Why is he keeping this shit secret? Okay, maybe he doesn't want to get their hopes up, but that's fing dumb. They don't give a shit if he's wrong. They'll just be happy for the lead. Especially since he fing tells them in about 10 minutes anyway. Dramatic secret is dramatic for no other reason than to be dramatic. Where the hell are you going? Just gonna see about a girl. Everyone accepts this answer. Just a reminder 371 meters a second is about 830 miles per hour. So once again, that over 1,000 miles per hour announcer was full of shit. Also, it's just one f***ing lap? Okay, I'm not expecting them to run a marathon, but that was done in just over a second. You couldn't have made them run 10 laps and stretch this sh out a bit? This is a lot of effort for just one second of fun. Wait, why does that complaint sound so familiar? Pop Claw's eyeballing a vial of V like it's made of Snickers. Mother's Milk eats his Snickers strangely. When did you last see sports coverage that didn't plaster stats, upcoming games, and unless Vought owns ESPN, a f***ing 
load of advertisements all over the screen. There's no way you'd be seeing this amount of free screen on an event this big. Hey, Popka. Mr. Lutz, um, house call? I'm just here for the rent. Porn video starts with the landlord dropping by to collect rent cliche. Or, so I've heard. Well, I wasn't banking on getting two videos worth of mileage out of that completely rectum joke, but here we are, and there she sits. <gasps> Being surprised after you crunch someone's head between your bare thighs. Also misunderstanding the proper procedure for getting head. He was dead already. That's bullshit. So you can cross the street, run up four flights of stairs in 10 seconds like some soup, can you? Butcher would be fucking diabolical at TV sins. You still ain't tweaked to the one weakness they all got, their reputations. Sure, that in internal combustion enemas, of course. Smart, actually. Very smart. Are we sure about that? Homelander can't see through zinc, so sure, the zinc box makes sense, but why throw it in the ocean instead of burying it underground somewhere? But also, it's complete bull shark sh that a porpoise would have just happened on this box and thought to tell the deep about it. That's right, I'm sitting this closing reveal for being both too dumb and too smart at the same time because that's my superpower. PG-13 sex scene in an R-rated television series. This may be their last reunion tour ever. I don't even know who the band is, but experience dictates that this statement always be treated as bullshit. I like to call it the Motley Crue Clause. New Zealand's ass. Also, we wouldn't dare play the song because they're using Strike Blues by John Lee Hooker as a cheap ploy to make this scene featuring Carl Urban's butt feel more gritty. Single lonely and pissed off man has the bare minimum available in his refrigerator cliche. Nothing about this apartment makes me believe that this man owns a coat rack. Also this bath towel. You're like the f***ing mold on my laundry room tiles. You scrape it off, it comes right back. This fictional laundry room, its ventilation, and the deputy director's method of dealing with it. Got a sample? Not yet. Mm. This could be heroin. And would heroin make people trust the soups any more than Compound V? I haven't seen Translucent around anywhere. <laughs> Writers really made Jennifer Esposito deliver this f***ing line with a straight face. Wherever he's going, it's around there. Because every time he leaves with the V, he comes back with the sesame noodles. Underestimating how much A-Train likes noodles and not thinking that a guy who can run that fast might make a detour across town to get his favorite dish. Or you and your dearly departed landlord are going to find yourselves on Pornhub. In the fatal cunning linger section. Nope, not looking that one up. Don't want to end up on the list. Let's just agree that it's sinful and hope that this universe's Rule 34 administrator wasn't paying attention to Butcher just now. Also, the writers want us to believe that Butcher comes up with these lines on the spot and hasn't been workshopping them for weeks at open mic nights. You know I'd much rather be at home rubbing on them toes than out here breaking up yard fights. And now we all know as well. You know, Jean-Paul Sartre said, marriage stifles are essential male urges. John Paul Satter also died an old lonely mother Bringing Sartre into your satire to create the appearance of depth. Why work so motherfucking hard if you don't have somebody to go home to and sleep next to at night? Spreading the stigma that living alone as an adult means you screwed up your life and you will never be happy. I hate when this happens to me. All it takes is a small piece of uneven payment and a momentary lapse in spatial awareness to completely throw off the smooth strut you had expertly crafted. Then you feel really embarrassed and just hope no one saw it. So I just want this extra to know that I feel their pain and that the whole thing was hardly noticeable. Your secret's safe with me. <laughs> this is the same guy we saw a few seconds ago with a paper bag instead of a coat. Is there some lazy programming going on in this simulation? Is this guy just grabbing all the screen time he can? Or is the route and events of his story much more interesting than the show is letting on? I think we should let her go. I would say episode has time for this, but at least this episode won't spend a good portion of its running time showing Frenchie fighting his own morality and dealing with his past when it comes to how to handle the Kamiko problem, right? Right? Where would that carnival cruise ship be without you? at the bottom of the ocean, where it belongs. Sorry, I, I, I had a bad experience at the buffet once. White fudge ding-dongs. Also, Frenchie will not only find this random vial of nail polish, but also he'll think it's interesting enough to hold on to. And then it randomly leads him to a place that gives them more clues about Kamiko. And that is all the Sherlockian bullshit. Do we eventually find out Huey's superpower is standing around? Because that is almost literally the only thing I ever see him doing. No one will be seated as Frenchie finds the partially retreat ticket of convenience. You need to unclench your asshole. Butthole orders. You need to eat my clenched asshole. Culinary butthole orders. You can't operate on foreign soil, but a plane hijacked over international waters. If you intercept, no one will protest. If you bring those passengers back alive, not one congressman will have the balls to vote against our bill. But why exactly would this be so influential? 
It's not like people aren't aware of the soup's capabilities. They have a whole marketing department for the sole purpose of everyone knowing about them and what they can do. So why does it matter that this particular tragedy is over international waters? Also, look, the boys, you can only go so far with making my beloved Allie Mills from The Karate Kid a diabolical, politically driven asshat before I get really upset. And the boys, you don't want to see me when I'm really upset. Actually, I'm pretty much just like this, but a tad bit whinier. So, get this, the dolphins there. I mean, they are really underfed and abused. The subplot of The Deep Dolphin Whisperer. Porpoise is on for all the some time. These fresh blood footprints look more like she stepped in blood on the way into the salon and not like she murdered a bunch of henchmen in a basement and then walked a couple of blocks to the salon. Money, petty, special deal. Do people often bypass the front desk and walk into the back office of nail salons looking to negotiate goods and services? Even though this reaction has no effect on the outcome of the situation, it still makes no sense. I'm not sure how super Starlight really is if she's this incapable of keeping the popcorn in the bowl. This door is open for long enough that all of the emergency oxygen masks should have been deployed, but they do not. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Come on now, you guys. You guys made it. This could possibly be the most celebratory of premature celebrations to ever prematurely celebrate in the history of prematurely celebrating things. Lift the plane? How? There's nothing to stand on. It's fucking air. Well, basically, you use whatever fake bullshit principles of physics you use to fly and apply those in an upward direction against the outside of the plane. But since it's possible Homelander is playing the fool here, I'm more curious about why Maeve is so ready to accept this as an answer. <laughs> oh, sure, now the oxygen masks deploy. I laser every one of you! That feeling when the soda and candy kicks in and you realize that you've wagered too many game tokens on the next round of laser tag. You've told yourself that you take it easy this time. You know, stay in control. We're not gonna have a repeat of the Albuquerque incident when you pistol whipped three people, climbed into the rafters of the arena and yelled, King Kong ain't got sh** on me! You aren't gonna let that happen again. But then a calm comes over you and you know nothing else makes you feel this alive. You live for this sh**. Homicide. You got here fast? This works. What's with the accent? What's with fuels? This character pulls a, accents, how do they work? Because Butcher clapping back at someone is an integral part of every scene he's in for some reason. For anyone who's concerned that the nail polish wouldn't get returned to its proper place, you can rest easy now. <sighs> I know where she's going. Neither Butcher nor Mother's Milk asks why Frenchie has kept this particularly relevant piece of evidence to himself for most of the episode. This TV show Ex Machina serves as a beacon to the whereabouts of Kamiko because these two have a shared connection written in the stars. I mean script. And how exactly did Kamiko get in the back part of the store and hide under this table without the store clerk noticing? Why is no one seeing and or attempting to help a girl with blood all over her clothes in person? This is the most ridiculous and f***ed up part of the episode and we haven't even gotten to the dolphin in the van part. You're not a bad person. Just a scared woman. Frenchie attempting to connect with and not cause further harm to someone that's visibly traumatized by their experiences is a great character moment for him and a great example of the writers dedicating screen time to making the characters feel real even though they exist in a surreal world. I guess I'm taking a sin off. Huey bugging Annie's phone is either absurdly easy and ridiculous or perfectly plausible and terrifying. So I'm just gonna hope that I'm sending this for the first reason. How deep up your ass did you pull that? It depends how deep does your tongue go. Frenchie and Mother's Milk Banter veers into the domain of eating butt for the second time in the episode. You need to eat my clenched asshole. And to each their own, but the hostility surrounding the butt eating has made me lose my appetite. What's sporty spice up to? How about posh? And baby? And scary spice? Ginger, on the other hand. This all spice is everywhere all at once for all the some time. The dolphin survives this longer than it should. <laughs> There's no way the cop doing this maneuver is not fully aware that it will result in the death of this dolphin. And this show is in no way committed to bringing us the follow-up investigation. Penn Station. If you know, you know. If you don't, consider yourself fortunate to continue living in blissful ignorance. It's funny because Kamiko gets hit by a train coming down the tracks. Do you get it? Do you get it? This really makes me wonder why A-Train is wearing his extremely recognizable soups uniform when he's trying to get something accomplished on the down low and without anyone else in the seven finding out. No, let me talk to her. I'm sure this is the more diplomatic and safer approach, but I'm so tired of seeing the same scene repeated over and over in the same episode that Frenchie the Soups Whisperer can go f himself, which in this universe is at least 97% possible. What if she's a Spice Girl? Then she would really, really, really want to zig a zig -ah, or so I've heard. Unfortunately, we all now know way too much about masks to believe that these two covering their faces with a handkerchief or shirt would be sufficient in preventing them from being gassed as well. Oh my 
Homelander! 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 Homelander. In case you confused it with Havana, ooh, na, na. Hey, I'm not gonna send the mess, but I am gonna send this half-eaten applesauce cup. Who eats half an applesauce cup? An apple gave its whole life for you, asshole. Hey, baby. We hear a sonic boom happening somewhere outside, indicating that A-Train was moving with some urgency. Yet the only indication of him super speeding into the room is the curtains being gently blown aside. There was this British guy, a buzz cut French guy, big black guy with a goatee, and a skinny white kid. I'll admit I'm curious about the punchline to this joke setup, but there's no way it's going to be at all appropriate, so I'm going to have to send it. And I fell for you right then and there. To tell this story right before killing her is sociopathically cruel, which would be fine if it was Homelander, but the show will continue to try to draw empathy for A-Train even after he needlessly needles someone he supposedly loves right before he literally needles someone he supposedly loves. Heroin overdose. Did he run here from Cuba? He ran over water and you didn't show it to us? We want to see it. Like Dash or Sonic or Jesus. Massage the bird with olive oil. Then a sprinkle of salt and pepper. Then I bake. This recipe sounds simple, but it also sounds f***ing delicious. And ultimately, this food will end up tossed on the ground. Justice for la poulet. And voila. Cho tries to get us to buy into Stockholm Syndrome as a valid meat cute. Nailing Christ to the cross with your nipples. You know, Power Fest, Capes for Christ, Believe Expo. Reminding me of my rejected script for Jason Bourne again. Still a bit of a sore spot. Mom! I like the idea that these two are surprised by running into each other at this event, rather than, you know, maybe sending a text that you'd arrived and had decided to go straight to your hotel because the food was better, even though I haven't seen you in like three months. But sure, yeah, do that. Not like I care if you... I'm sorry, what was they saying again? Jesus said, hey, bro. He did not. People who have faith, those are my peeps, y'all. That's what Jesus said. Thinking Jesus would want anything to do with peeps. He'd be like, oh, so I literally came back from the dead and you celebrate it by eating tar-flavored marshmallow birds? Thanks, guys. To every entrance, I'm the holy hell. This statement prepared me for something more than one handgun, which is fine, but your partners might need to actually know a bit more detail about what they're going up against. Security's tighter than a choir boy's eye. We all get where he's going with this off-color joke, but what Billy doesn't realize is that his delivery of this line asserts his own first-hand knowledge of choir boys as opposed to the churches. Uh, I don't know how to blackmail anybody. Yeah, we, we've done a murder. Comparatively speaking, this will be a piece of cake. Comparatively speaking, these are two very different skill sets. For example, I'm excellent at TV sins, but have never satisfied a woman's thirst for knowledge about the Roman Empire. Yeah, that's it. Dr. Julian Barrow. An esteemed French neurosurgeon, Susan Lopez from Evanston, and her daughter, Maya. Show thinks that professions and motherhood are the things that make some human lives more valuable than others. And I'm just sitting here as a non-mom who writes jokes about TV shows for a living thinking, okay, so I'm a bad example, but I promise you don't have to be a parent or a neurosurgeon to have value. Mom, when did that happen? What are you talking about? It's always been there. When did what happen? And why does it sound like you're discussing the placement of a couch and not the reprehensible comic book you've randomly walked past? Using shitty bigot math to be a dick because you're afraid of what might happen if a stranger you don't give a f about happens to order the hot dog platter, the clams casino, or just say screw it and go a la carte. Yes, I know that this is the point the show is making, but it's not just acceptable to do the math. You need to show your work. Um, <clears throat> Discount DJ Cool covers. It's private, but... No one else sees this. And it's nothing wrong with having a little church up in you, you know? Sued the bishop to the nun. Writers have Mother's Milk set this one up because they thought the Butcher Improv's Comedy Hour would work better as a duo. Keep an eye on the lad, right? Yeah. Where the f*** are you going? Just do it. You know, for a team trying to work together, they sure do pull the I'm not going to tell you so the audience can stay in suspense about something you could probably know cliche card quite a bit. Not labeling your drink station. I mean, I'd probably guess lemonade for this one, and this one might be iced tea, maybe? But that still doesn't tell me if it's sweetened or undrinkable. Just took a lovely little stroll around St. John's, and you'll never guess what I am the cross. Was it a cleaning company? Because no judgment, but I've never arrived unannounced to someone's home that looks this spotless. There's not even a single fingerprint in sight. I told you. Well, I'll tell you who didn't f***ing tell me. Writing a scene so you can do an info dump, but then being reluctant as f*** to actually dump the info. Would you like some tea? I got the English stuff. Catering to the English. We used your last name. You said beloved wife. You buried an empty f***ing coffin. This is what caused him to abandon his partners when they were right in the middle of blackmailing a public figure. Billy bullshit, maybe melodramatic, but this seems less about that and more about his character not having anything to do while Huey is getting baptized. 
It has been eight years since she's been missing. Five days since you laughed at me. Three days since the living room. But it'll still be two days till I say I'm sorry. <laughs> sudden Billy Zane is sudden. And Billy Zane. He was the bomb in the Phantom. The convenience of this teddy bear camera is only slightly more sinnable than the discomfort I will have around teddy bears from now on. Also, if A-Train knew this camera was here, why did he wait until now to view the footage, instead of stopping here as he's been running back and forth between New York and Havana? A-Train grieves by watching a cheesy movie Popclaw start in and then some covert sex tape shenanigans, as opposed to, say, not taunting her with the story of how you met her before you murder her. Did you hear that static sound? I hope so, because it's the only explanation we will get as to why this hidden camera has a cut to the exact relevant moment for expedited plot progression setting. And I would very much like to welcome Homelander, our special guest. Maybe I'm underselling Ezekiel's celebrity, but if Homelander was going to be a special guest here, how is that not in the marketing material? Using wooden stairs in your baptismal. Not paying attention to stomach circumference when doing full immersion baptism. This man's belly button is still unholy. Thank you. Good night. See you, friend. Huey immediately starts to blackmail Ezekiel after Homelander walks out of the door and somehow he's not super heard, lasered, and or disappeared. Your d*** was so perfect and long and stretchy and you, you played my butt like jazz. This sounds like Huey has never been intimate with himself, let alone another human. And it works. Who the hell are you? More importantly, where the hell did everyone else go? No managers, bodyguards, acolytes? How does someone this in demand and popular at this event end up alone in an open tent for this long? You're like the f***ing rain man of f***ing people over. <laughs> Not a compliment. Or even funny. It's clear from this first hit and later kicking it over that this headstone wasn't even attached to the base stone. And I know that's not how headstones work, because if it was, my rural Michigan high school friends would have gone grave tipping on the weekends and left the cows alone. Call your jets, Gov. It's not a hate crime. No, but it is a crime crime. So, 58-10, the righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance and he will bathe his feet in the blood of the wicked. Did Homelander have this scripture memorized for this moment? He strikes me more as a quoting from two Corinthians type, no? This light is very close to the wall. Almost too close. I don't know why I said it that way. There's nothing devious about this lamp. Or is there? I'm not sure who the first person was to film mirrors that reflected someone else in the conversation, but I am sure that it's been done enough that there isn't much left to be gained by making me wonder why this mirror's here in the first place. They Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened. Mistaking compassion for compassion. It's just a mistake. No, just talk to me. Just tell me what... This scene has some great writing and great performances. Very quickly, we're able to learn so much about this relationship, as well as the toll Maeve's work has taken on her life. It's efficient, effective, and worth a sent off. Wait a second, didn't Butcher say... I'll meet you at the hospital in half an hour. What happened? Did the sun fall out of the sky? Soup on soup violence ain't our concern, mate. Despite what I know, I still hear soup on soup violence. And that is all I can think of now. This isn't about you, isn't it? Moms. I mean, I, I kept your secret. Scrimp by selling houses. Hard times can befall any industry, so I'm not saying it was all sunshine and rainbows, but that doesn't make it any less strange for Starlight to be going along with the I am but a lowly peasant realtor bit that her mom is trying to sell us right now. Show doesn't commit to making this butcher's name in the long term. We the same you and I, like eggs, hard outside, soft inside, or pineapples perhaps. Comparing yourself to two things that should never be a pizza topping. The deep finds himself in hot water. The news should be less concerned with making puns. Also, I will, of course, send the blatant news position, but I'll also send that The Deep changes the channel to the Believe Expo so that it can directly reference him in a bit, and that it is apparently being broadcast live all day? Quick, name a fundamentalist Christian festival that's broadcast live on a normal TV channel all day long. And no, the Republican convention during election years doesn't count. When the Bible was written, life expectancy was 30 years old. Methuselah has entered the chat. It also says that it's a sin to eat shrimp. It does? Dang it! Do you know how many times people have eaten shrimp on a TV show and I've stood by and said nothing? I'm guessing about 31. I'm just as scared and confused as the rest of you. Me responding to my friends when I convince them all to watch Existence somehow makes it into the episode. <laughs> Baby Jack Jacking. Making opening fire your first line of defense in a baby superhero factory. 
While it's mostly for aiming purposes, Butcher still remembers to support the baby's head and neck. I gotta give credit where credit is due. But also, where's the trigger on this gun? Gratuitously milking the ratings. Black Noir is being pretty bad at sneaking for a soup whose power seems to be mostly being good at sneaking. And if you think that he revealed himself as a ruse to trap Frenchie when he runs in the other direction, then ask yourself why that would be better than normal sneaking. Now, since I can feel your excitement growing, the comment section will self-destruct in three, two, we won't dare play it, but Ain't No Sunshine by Bill Withers is playing over this scene, and if you know, you know that you know, you know the sin is, I know. Reality shows. I know this is supposed to be manufactured bullshit, but it's also supposed to seem genuine to the public, right? So which chuckle f thought the best way to represent Translucent as a man of the people was by showing him on a swing? Yes, it's a hilarious visual for us, but it's f***ing ridiculous as part of this propaganda. I was trying to go for something a bit more personable and down to earth. Not this down to earth. Why is Courtney having a pop at this editor as if the creative direction was all his fault? Look, editors can perform feats of magic, but surely he didn't choose the content. I refuse to believe that he is the creative director and editor in a company that has a Marvel-esque cinematic universe. If your brief wasn't clear enough, that's on you, Courtney. We here are not f***ing Heidi and Spencer. Even in 2019, Heidi and Spencer references were dated enough to earn you a sin. And having to hear the reference in 2023 means you're getting five. Has a heavenly body lost her luster? I suppose a few seconds of news position is better than two minutes of previously ons, but this is still sh we saw literally at the end of the last episode. Stop acting like we aren't binging this entire show in one afternoon. After Starlight's shocking appearance at the Believe Expo, social media is still buzzing. Gotta love slash sin news stations that are perfectly synchronized to continue each other's sentences for the convenience of expositional channel hopping. Who's that dude that stuck his in her face? She should f that f in the hole. Okay. okay, those weren't our bleeps, those were the news station's bleeps, which means one of two things is happening here. This is either a live interview where someone's predictively bleeping the swears and blurring her lips, or this is a recorded interview which the anchor should not be shocked by. Drinking beer by the pitcher. Yes, I know what happens, but we really need to stop supporting the idea that this is a good way to consume your carbonated yeast. I mean, how lazy do you have to be to prefer room temperature flat beer instead of making the short walk to the bar between pints? Five blocks down into a pet store where he hides behind his jumbo bag of kibbles and bits for four hours. The scariest part of this story is that there's a pet store that just let a kid hide behind a bag of dog food for four hours and doesn't check on him to see if he needs any help. I've been worried, asshole. Backhanded sentiments. Live your life. That's what Robin will want. No. I think what Robin would want is to not have been jelloed at high speed for no good reason. Can we stop speaking for the dead as if this is supposed to make grieving people feel better? My grandfather built this place with his bare hands. That's me in the middle. Homelander's homestead is all set up to look like he had a typical American childhood. But isn't this all easily disprovable? These weren't really his parents, and I bet his grandfather had nothing to do with building this house, so isn't putting this picture in fairy tale out there risky? I mean, Butcher and friends managed to uncover a lot more with far less. Cubs fans. Welcome to my bedroom. Hasn't changed a bit. Great observation. Why hasn't it changed at all? Homelander implies that his parents died when he was pretty young, so why has this house been kept as if it were some sort of shrine to his childhood? So no hero was born. None of them. They're all just kids dosed with the blue shit. I can't even begin to describe what it would take to support a conspiracy of this size. Putting aside the people involved in the secret creation and distribution of Compound V, we'll find out that some parents even volunteered their children to be injected. And after nearly 50 years, no one has come forward or leaked any of this to the press. Sure, it's not impossible, but if Butcher and this lot have managed to uncover the whole damn thing in a matter of months, I'd imagine someone else would have managed to all the president's men themselves to the truth as well. The whole corridor can hear this? Stillwell's office should be the most soundproof room in the whole f***ing building considering what goes on in there. And I think we may need to reconsider your position in the seven. And I think that firing an employee after she reported sexual assault on live TV might tank your stock price. I love Annie claiming her power in this scene. I just wish it didn't come at the expense of making Stillwell look naive. Sure, she might see Annie as new and malleable at this point, but she must see how firing her would look pretty hideous whichever way they choose to dress it up. And why bother? To save the deep? Why is her preference to get Annie off the books instead of dealing with the persistent boner burden that is the deep? You really stood for something. 
pretty sure that was just written by the marketing guys. Elevators that know exactly when to arrive to give maximum impact to your big zinger. This would have been really awkward if they had another 10 floors to go. Listen, I got one word for you. It's a surefire way to solve this puzzle. Is it going to be a soup that just so happens to have a power that would be extremely helpful in this situation and is also vulnerable enough to be taken advantage of by a bunch of non-soups, but for some reason hasn't been mentioned until now? Mesmer. Yeah, that sounds right. I've seen you eat ice cream. Oh my god. Chunky monkey, I believe. Where's this going? Well, Frenchie will create a terrible and not very convincing chunky monkey metaphor to get mother's milk to go along with his terrible plan of involving another soup. So in other words, this works. Also, no one actually eats chunky monkey. It's just a catchy name that's fun to say. We need to expose the myth, people. Hashtag chunky monkey is a lie. No one wants to f the writer. Hey, wait, hold up. I mean, that's not true. No, that's fair. She climaxed and accidentally turned into ice. As you can imagine, um, it snapped off. Which makes Seth insanely lucky that he only lost his dick. If he was that close to Ice Princess when she became negative 346 degrees, the entire outside of his body should have been affected too. Or at the very least, he should have had a pair of frozen seth stickles. Please do uh, continue the escapades. We don't make jokes or judgments here. Well said. I mean, how else can you expect poor Seth to let it go, let it go? We don't get a good look at it, but I think it's hilarious that Translucent has a bust that is likely, well, just the stand. I'm going to need you to make a public apology, and you're going to be taking a sabbatical from the seven. She's doing this f***ing now in the corridor? Still strikes me as the type of person who likes to control things, so I'd expect this to happen in her office. And likely with Homelander present, just in case an emergency deep frying is required. It's only a matter of time before she, or let's be honest, some of the other women speak up. Again, very damaging conversations are being had in the middle of the f***ing corridor. Now, for the record, f*** the deep and everything he is, but I'm just stunned that it isn't in Stillwell's best interest to be choreographing this in private. Our new movie, Insurrection, it's really exciting. A <laughs> superhero movie with Seth Rogen in it. <laughs> Imagine someone thinking that was a good idea. <laughs> Glad that's never horneted. I mean, happened. <laughs> That was weird. Also, thinking that using the subtitle Insurrection for your movie is ever a good idea. But there's only one person who can see inside their hearts and read their minds. So Mesmer is apparently a child star that's been neglected and tossed aside by Vought, but why? We'll get told it happened after some insider trading, but his power is insane. The ability to read people's minds should make him one of the most in-demand soups on the planet, and he's out here doing the convention circuit? Who chooses the deep over Mesmer? Scene does not contain a The Crow Wicked Prayer poster. Scene also never confirms that Billy Zane is reprising his role as the Phantom in the boys averse Do it, you cowards. Do it. What number am I thinking of? 867? It's like Mesmer has a sixth sense or something. I guess it could also be an artificial intelligence. And it's really not fair to keep a power like that to yourself. You really should pay it forward. <laughs> Secondhand lines. Don't you want teenage kicks with A-Train? Considering Mesmer hates Vought in soups, I don't know why he'd be wearing this other than to advertise to us that he has a link to A-Train. Who the f*** are you? Why don't you take a peep and see? It's really odd seeing the kid from Sixth Sense playing a character that has superpowers very similar to Bruce Willis's character in Unbreakable. Or a few rapidly aging beach bums, a sundowning elderly woman, and an alien killing glass of water from the boys being part of the Shyamalanaverse. Am I sinning this show for not becoming part of the Shyamalanaverse? Yes. Yes, I am. Do the writers think it's funny to make me say Shyamalanaverse? Yes. Yes, they do. How do you know about Cleo? Well, I work for Child Services. <laughs> I love transitions like this. Have they just been walking in silence all this time? This cut makes it seem like they left the convention, walked across this field, and are only now picking up this conversation again. I don't have a DVD player. Being reminded how much owning physical media is becoming a thing of the past. My wife, Becca, used to hum the Spice Girls. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I really, really, really want a Ziga Skip. Ah. Just remember, do your friends using the were your real friends tactic to get a person who is at best a co-worker on your side. Might as well go ahead and talk about how everyone in the office is just one big happy family. F off. That is gonna kill somebody when it lands in Boston. Breaking the ice by referencing a future manslaughter. So what if I took you to a house you'd never seen before, full of photos of parents you never met, toys you never played with, Hardy Boy books that you never read. Acting like if there are Hardy Boys books in front of you, you're not just going to quit what you're doing and read all of them ASAP. Frank and Joe deserve better, Homelander. 
Also, my goodness, is there anything other than emotions left in this episode? I said skip. I'm really sorry about the blanket. It never should have been there. And Randy set deck has already been terminated. Cool, but how did Randy Setdeck ever get a hold of Homelander's actual childhood blanket? Why would that even be a thing that still exists at Vought? They're hardly the sentimental type, so wouldn't it have either been discarded and never seen again, or locked away so securely that random Randy Setdeck would never have accidentally been able to get a hold of it? Just, just, go walk it off! Walk it off! She broke my f***ing wrist! Mesmer would be mesmerizing at TV sins. I got your phone linked to my Find Your Shithead Friends app. Okay, this explains why Butcher is able to pop in at extremely convenient times, but those apps require the other person's phone permission too. And as resourceful as Butcher is, can you imagine any of these guys being dumb enough to leave their phones unattended and unlocked near him? I mean, other than Huey, of course. Wow, now we gotta kill him. Saying you've got to kill someone loud enough for the person you're talking about killing to hear. Frenchie, you're dating a terrorist. Is this true? Frenchie expects to get an answer to this question from a woman who's been almost 100% silent since he met her, and has shown no indication that she speaks or understands English. Also, Frenchie will be deeply hurt by this revelation, but I'm shocked by his lack of perspective. By many definitions, he and the rest of the boys are the terrorists in this situation. Vought is the accepted power, and they're working against them in a pretty illegal fashion. Get off your high horse, Frenchie, and wait for some context. The scene with Baby Homelander that this blanket leads to is one of the best parts of the episode, but if you think I'm not sending the conveniently placed baby blanket being on top of this pile, then welcome to the channel. You must be new here. Don't forget Thursday we have a mime coming in to reenact the entirety of Schindler's List. It's gonna be special. Never got the point of these. To me, I always look like granddad's bollocks flopping in the wind. You would think that how many testicles does Butcher's granddad have, and why did Butcher ever have occasion to see them, would at least crack the top 10 weirdest questions the show has made me ask, but you would be wrong. I can give you everything you want on this list. Except? Except Homelander. Then what's the f***ing point of the investigation? If the FBI are terrified of Homelander, why are they even bothering to go after Vought? Homelander is Vought. So what makes her think that going after them is any less dangerous? Because if you watch that episode of Downton Abbey, then I'm going to be one behind and we're not going to be able to binge watch together. Using a Downton Abbey reference to show the masculine man has a hard cliche. Also, making your better halfway till it's convenient for you to watch the next episode of Downton Abbey, Carson and Bates are going to get in a fight and strongly harumph at each other this week. What kind of monster are you, Mother's Milk? Also, also, binge watching. Tina, um, it's Mesmer. Why is he using his soup name to the CPS lady? He has an actual name for official sh right? There's this beach in the Bahamas. Let's just go. Are we talking about this? I understand the confusion, Huey, because there is zero about the interactions you've had with Starlight over the past five episodes and change that has led me to believe she would not only be willing to move to a tropical island with you, but would also be the one to suggest it. I'm gonna go get us a picture. Oh. Billy, you like, let me guess, Guinness? Who drinks Guinness from a pitcher? Waiting 57 minutes and 54 seconds to finally Billy Joel us. <laughs> Office Christmas parties. And really only because of the half-baked movies and sitcom episodes they inspire. Also, I'm already irritated about the future conversation surrounding whether or not The Boys is a Christmas show. Oh, 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 Merry Christmas! Tranluce Santa Claus. Easy tiger. I want you on your A-game. Assuming a man can't be on their A-game because they drank too much alcohol. And while you're probably right, it still hurts our feelings. Homelander's busy saving lives. Which is interesting considering we've already seen at least four of the seven at this Christmas party not saving any lives. I'm not saying they can't have time off, but isn't it a little irresponsible to have three superheroes and the deep off duty at the same time? Using tiny cursive writing on your name badges. The whole point is to make introductions less awkward. And you're hardly going to accomplish that by forcing me to squint stare a few inches above everyone's left nipple before saying hello. How the f does he walk around that sweaty f***ing wetsuit all day long? Balls mashed up against oh. his Butcher would be excellent at wetsuit sins. <sighs> Man, Huey didn't learn a single thing from Seth's cautionary tale, did he? After Robin programming other people's remotes, it felt kind of pointless. Yeah, but most people don't require a live-action pureeing of their partner to realize this. These incredibly high-definition pictures are not the work of a shitty little $85 camera I put in my doorbell casing. So take that hardworking and underpaid continuity people. Don't worry, everyone will forget all about it when we get to the gill scene. To have a hero like you in a place like Sandusky? Yay, we're carrying on with the Deep's very shallow B-plot. 
So glad we're doing this instead of spending more time with Frenchie, Kamiko, Queen Maeve, Black Noir, or, you know, just making these episodes 10 minutes shorter. Trying to type with gloves on. Also, I've never understood why these soups just stay in their costumes 24-7. I get they don't really have secret identities, but they do own other clothing, right? The more I see it, the angrier I get. Stop showing us people vomiting, especially with zero f***ing warning, you low-hanging, fruit-grabbing, rat bastard sh biscuits. Not you, Noir. You've been great. Having a character telling us another character is doing great work, even though we, as the viewers, have seen none of that great work being done. We get 37 subplots about how creepy the deep is, but so far we get none of the noir kicking ass goodness that I'm so here for. I just can't help noticing that it all started when you came along. If you were in my position, what would you do to you? I'm sure there's nothing Homelander enjoys more than swinging his d around, but what good does exposing Starlight do right now? If he thinks she's working with the boys, why not use her to draw them out or trap them? She didn't know. Well, she stinks of adrenaline and her heart's beating like a little rabbit. <laughs> no sh Captain Murder Boner. You try staring down the barrel of a sociopathic Superman and see how dry your panties are after the experience. Oh no, you don't stir, you fold. Like Backseat cooking. I don't think I can do this anymore. I know the power of a recently relieved boner can provide a certain amount of love fog, but does Huey really think he can walk away from this? He pulled the trigger on Translucent's last colonoscopy, is one of the few people who know about Compound V, and is now expecting to start a life, not just with the soup, but a member of the Seven. He's so deep in this, the only way he walks away is if DC buys the rights to the comics and James Gunn retroactively un his life in the Flashpoint movie. I mean, why not? It's apparently gonna fix everything else. Better to be loyal to a dead woman who doesn't know and doesn't care. How's that working out for you? Oof. And I mean every syllable of what I'm about to say. Huey survives this. He's fine. Remington Steel is almost on. I know A-Train is saying this in jest, but this is Remington f***ing Steel you're talking about, A-Train. The only negative thing about Remington Steel is that no one has bothered to give us a Blu-ray set of the complete series. My place is burned, they got me. Butcher has a camera in his apartment that's linked to his phone, and how many of those apps don't also come with some sort of alarm that tells you when someone breaks in? What's the point of only finding out after the f***ing break-in has happened? Also, I'm not sure what button I'm supposed to believe Butcher pressed here, but I don't see anything on his phone that looks like a home security app. Get your ass over here in 20 minutes. I'm gonna burst on like a f***ing piñata. So you're gonna blindly run around hoping you hit the target without hospitalizing too many kids in the process? Feels inefficient, but it's your party, dude. Right here, sport. Why is A-Train wasting his super speed in this apartment? How far away could Huey's room possibly be? Special 2016 Comic-Con edition? Huey still has these? Call me sentimental, but I think the discarding slash burning slash voodooing of the action figures of the person who turned my partner into chunky human chutney would happen almost immediately. I am not leaving you with him, all right? You're just a kid. You're my kid. Imagine having Simon f peg in your show and you just use him to spout off repetitive dialogue like this. <sighs> I'll be all right. I got this. You really shouldn't, Huey, but somehow you do and I'm not buying any of it. I was drawing you a picture. You were. Can I see? Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. Lying. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it here. Telling someone that Ohio is a place to love living. Way back, I said... Like, ah. Okay, we'd be totally remiss if we didn't address the infamous nightmare fuel that is the gill scene. I think I see what the show's doing, and I'm all for addressing the fact that men can be victims too, but I'm not sure I'm on board with the idea of this being some sort of karmic payback or a baby step towards a redemptive arc for the deep. It shouldn't take an eye for an eye situation for him to realize that what he did to Starlight and who knows how many other women was wrong. Either way, here's a sin for just being gratuitously f***ing gross. Looks like Butcher recently graduated from the Michael Myers School of Chasing Your Victims. How did you? I stuck a little bug on you. Wow, good thing this is Mesmer's lucky jacket that he never leaves the house without, but also never cleans, folds, or uses any of its pockets. Also, episode expects us to believe that a New York airport bathroom would ever be completely unoccupied, and I do not believe you. Mesmer gets pulled to his feet by a broken wrist and doesn't scream, Ow, that's my broken f***ing wrist, you f***ing dunder schmuck. Now, we don't know the circumstances of how Becca left that office, but it does seem strange that Homelander wouldn't think that her leaving in this state wouldn't look suspicious to the camera that he must know is there. Okay, maybe we can chalk this up to Homelander is reckless and so powerful that he doesn't give a sh**, but that just makes me question why he cares about anything at all. Oh, wait, no, 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 not that one. This one. Yeah, that's my guy. Because f all these other lobsters that apparently don't deserve to live. You can call me Uncle Billy. Asking a kid to call you uncle when you are not, in fact, their uncle. 
Don't say sorry. No, I, look at you standing up for yourself and murdering people. Don't forget the murdering part, Hugh Senior. So what are these uh, pets? No, just breeding. I try not to get too attached to my subjects. Heavy-handed metaphors. Also, owning dogs for the sole purpose of breeding them. You're one step away from a puppy mill, sir, and that's getting you all the f***ing sins. You want to know about Rebecca Butcher? You went to Stillwell about her because you knew that'd tip over the first domino. Well, it led to me. Are we missing a f***ing scene here? How did Homelander get from Stillwell to Vogelbaum? What f***ing domino? Did he listen in on Stillwell warning him? Why would Homelander assume that Vogelbaum had anything to do with Rebecca based on what was said with Stillwell? At this point, he has no idea that she was pregnant. She's just a missing person. What do you want? Forgiveness? Now? After you raise me like a f***ing lab rat? Holy sh! Anthony Starr is so f***ing good as Homelander. I almost feel sorry for him here. Almost. No, Homelander, we had a deal. Everyone else is fair game. I still don't understand how not going after Homelander is going to make a f***ing difference. Do they really believe that Homelander will happily sit back as the mud people go after all of Vought and every other soup? If they're that afraid of Homelander, they should also be afraid of Vought. Are you okay? Nope. Not doing it. Not even tempted. Not at all. I'm not falling for that totally transparent setup. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? You and your corporation are f***ed. Unequivocally, unilaterally f***ed. Unequivocally, unilaterally, premature celebration. For the last half century, you have been feeding the American people the line that your superheroes are chosen by God. And no one in the world thought it was at all odd that God was only choosing to bless American babies with the gift of superpowers. No one in the entire world thought that that was unlikely. They all bought the, yeah, God did it, f***ing weird, I know, but there we go, line. Zoom in your pants cliche. Someone tell me what the hell's going on. Watch. Just wait. Watch this. Instead of just giving his boss the very urgent headline, this asshole will slowball the information and make her ask another three times as if he knows he's building to a big reveal at the end of an episode of television. And you haven't been using me to get back at A-Train. No! The answer is no, of course. I have an Annie. Yes, I bugged your phone, but I really like you, and here's why I'm trying to take down Vought. Huey does nothing to help himself here, and maybe that's because he's overwhelmed with guilt and he knows this isn't the whole truth and just lets this question hang so the show can have some more conflict. Huey has nothing to lose here and should immediately be telling her all about Vought and Compound V. I didn't ask for your help. Yeah, looked like you had it all under control. <laughs> Actually, I kind of did. He was just explaining to Starlight why she can't trust Vought and should trust him. However, I imagine what little credibility Huey had might be undermined now that he's running away from her with the man who shot her. Why doesn't he stay with Annie to prove that he's on her side? In case you confused it with Talrafat, Rhode Island. Blocking a scene so it looks like a bunch of NPCs are wading through a well-lit kiddie pool. I don't care if you're a superhero or not, jump scaring a bunch of soldiers with loaded guns is never a great idea. It will always get you a sin. How do they get the formula? Honestly, we have no idea. The fact that we find out Stillwell honestly doesn't have any clue that Homelander's been shipping Compound V around the globe to create supervillains might be the most unbelievable part of this episode. The fact that superheroes exist is literally more believable than this plot point. It is a whole new world now. And there is only one company that has the product to fight back. How is there only one company that manages superheroes? I could buy that Vought is the most successful company, but I'm not buying that they're the only one. Episode has time for this. I hid this under my floorboards right after daddy left. Hiding things under floorboards sounds like a cool, fun thing kids do, sure, but I've never met a floor without a subfloor or a child adept at removing floorboards. I thought I did what was right. Thinking we'll accept that excuse for this wallpaper. You know the whole reason the Navy discontinued their sea mammal mine clearance program? It's because it costs way too much to train the f***ing dolphins. It's probably more accurate to say that this was too expensive to maintain all the support staff and equipment required for the program, but we all know the Deep is an idiot. So the sin is that the Navy replaced the dolphins with cheaper robots, automating perfectly good jobs. You know, I'm seriously leaving, Jeff. F*** Ohio. What are you looking at, Ellie? Eastern Meadowlarks. It was either bird watching or alcoholism, so. Why not both? There's a clear reason for the existence of famous grouse, wild turkey, and old crow. But then my grandchildren got incinerated. Grandkids. Complicated, intimate, hard to quantify. The intro to my online dating profile somehow makes it into the episode. Windows new, the front path is scrubbed, and there's a black van with flowers and I'm probably full of c**ts waiting to jump us. Acting like a van full of flowers doesn't warn caution on its own. What? I have allergies. You're a pathetic and an insult to Robin's memory. I think I'm doing this for her. 
It's very satisfying to see Huey complete his hero's journey and remember who he was before all this got started. He's standing up to Butcher and is no longer letting him use Robin's memory as a tool of manipulation. So take one off for our boy being all grown up. Then add one back for this being a student has become the teacher cliche. The Deep shapes his body to R.E.M.'s Everybody Hurts because of some sort of transformation theme. But all I can think about is him getting shaving cream in his gills and it's making me uncomfortable. I was almost arrested just for knowing you. Misreading the situation. You were definitely almost lasered. And now you want me to help your psycho killer friends? Huey doesn't answer with fa 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 Run, 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 run away. You have 30 seconds to get the hell out of here. Setting an arbitrary ticking clock. I mean, why the hell would I ever help you? Interrupting your arbitrary ticking clock. You saved me. When did I ever save you? From blue balls? Bowling alley. I, I mean, the bowling alley. <laughs> That's what I meant. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Show plays this like Nathan was just passing by this train yard on the way to the grocery store and just happened to see his brother using this train not as directed. How is seen? You back on that compound V. Your f***ing bones fuse back together overnight. That is a good thing, right? Show's been very clear about the negative side effects of compound V. Why is it trying to speed past what sounds like a breakthrough in medical science? <laughs> Sitting down by someone on a piano bench without their explicit consent. Playing a piano with gloves on. Madeline. Stop, Mr. Edgar. Waiting eight episodes to whip out your Giancarlo Esposito. Start thinking about the view from 82. And on your way there, talk to Kevin on 7, and be sure to dine on 29, and take a pee on 43. Thank you. <laughs> this is the most premature celebration to ever prematurely celebrate. Those burnout eye sockets from later tonight could see you now, still will. Electricity goes in, glass comes out. It's a hell of a party trick. Do you ever, um... Use it for fun. I think we all deserve a little explanation about what this guy is thinking because it sounds like he's trying to get his rod lightninged. Not in the mood for what? Your bottomless casual cruelty. Bottomless casual cruelty. The newest trend you may have heard your kids talking about. Is it getting kicked in your bear balls or the hottest new brunch item? Find out more at 11. Ass you could bounce a quarter off of. Are there asses that you can't bounce a quarter off of? To me, that seems more likely to be the exception. Oh, sweet boy. I'm pretty sure there could be an entire book based on this series titled Things to Never Say While Having Sex. Oh, you know, in uh, medieval times, they locked prisoners inside a pillory barrel. And they kneel in their own excrement until they got sepsis and died, so. A detail that for some reason, the Medieval Times Dinner and Tournament in Lyndhurst, New Jersey does not want you to tell the patrons. The only reason I even applied was that I thought the establishment had an appreciation for historical accuracy. It's just that you carry so much and the pain of losing a child to miscarriage is so Stillwell knew that Homelander had visited Vogelbaum and knew that Vogelbaum had told Homelander about the baby, but didn't tell Stillwell that he told Homelander the baby died a few seconds after the birth? Because if that's what this episode is trying to tell us, I do not believe you. Juiced up on his newfound confidence, Huey mounts a one-man rescue operation armed with nothing but a retainer. He didn't even know if Mother's Milk and Frenchie were together, still alive, or that he would end up in the same place as them. All right, all right, all right. What the f***? Man. There's a point during the retrieval of the retainer where it looks like Frenchie is holding onto Huey's tongue and I have no idea what's going on. Or why afterward Frenchie looks pissed that Huey somehow didn't enjoy unwashed fingers in his mouth. <laughs> Frenchie's the only one that gets shot despite them all standing out in the open. This may be slightly better than Stormtrooper aim, but it's equally dependent on plot armor. Convenient wall for cover is convenient. Almost like someone designed this room with a shootout in mind. Huey straight up murders this guy that was just doing his job and who's most likely got a family. Don't worry about that though. I'm sorry! Because it's funny that Huey's using a gun. Also apologizing to people before you murder them. Drop your weapon! These faceless guards who were shooting to kill a moment ago will go all soft now and just try to arrest them because that's exactly how this should go down for our protagonists. No justice will be had for Brad, which is the name I've given this guy to make his death more real to you. Face the wall! Hands on your heads! Starlight Ex Machina. Not satisfied with just knocking this guy out, Starlight puts him up in the ceiling. I got this. Go. No. I'm the one he wants. I'm not leaving you. 
not sweet, but this just tasks her with protecting you as well as fighting A-Train. It'd really be better if you just left. And other things I've heard from my exes. So the question on the table is whether or not A-Train would have to be running faster than the speed of light to avoid these blasts. Now, I have my opinion, and you have yours, and both of them are part of the problem. Try to kill me. And my trigger finger goes soft. Wouldn't have expected such a normal reaction from someone with a strange nickname for their penis. You are pretty darn impressive. I mean, especially for, you know, one of you. I gotta hand it to the show for putting Butcher toe-to-toe -to -toe with Homelander without him immediately getting lasered and having that somehow make sense for the story. That probably would have been enough for a sin removal, but then the show pulls off a twist where Billy doesn't actually have the leverage over Homelander that he thought he did, and still he is somehow not lasered, and still it makes sense. Ultimately, Billy being alive has nothing to do with some convenient bullshit. Homelander is the same sadistic psycho he always is, and it all really comes down to his f***ed up sense of humor about everything. This show has absolutely stuck the landing on this final scene and deserves multiple sins off, so let's give it one for every episode that got us here. So I went back to Vogelbaum, and I managed to squeeze the truth out of him. But we didn't get to see that scene because this show has suddenly grown a conscience against scenes where a body part gets smushed, I guess. But I want to see the smushed body parts. Oh, well. We might find out next season, but we don't find out this season whether or not baby Teddy survives, so that's potential baby murder, which is definitely getting you a sin. I'm your father. We are a family. Cliffhangers. We're like children. We're not men. No, we're not. We're not men. Why don't you shoot him in the head? My name is Barry Allen. I am Starlight. I'm 110 pounds and I'm five foot six. What you doing? What you doing there? Hi. <clears throat> um, my name's Chris Parker. I don't know, Homelander is so... He's like Jesus or something. Hallelujah. You're my savior, man. My own personal Jesus Christ. Cool. Cool, cool. Oh, cool, 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 cool. You want me to? You want me to go to Seven Tower by myself, and and you and you want me to plant a bug, like I'm what, like I'm f***ing James Bond? Yeah, exactly. You got it. Yeah. And this is the best that you could that the the government, the U.S. government, can come up with. I mean, you, you're NASA for crying out loud. You I could be like your tech guy, you know, like I could be in the van with the thing. Hey, can I be your guy in the chair? Then who the f*** are you? I'm Batman. Pander to me, kid. One tiny crack in the hull and our blood boils in 13 seconds. Soul flare might crop up, cook us in our seats. Oh man, I shot Marvin in the face. What? It's like looking in a mirror, only not. Open it. Wheezing down. Man, I ain't riding in no goddamn trunk for no minute, man. Why well, I can't ride up front with you? You're gonna kill him? In case you people have forgotten, I am the law. Well, where is he? Jersey City. It's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who saved the world. You're so ambitious, aren't you? Do you know what you look like to me with your good bag and your cheap shoes? You look like a rube. No one wants your f***ing soups in the army? No soup for you! Sorry about all that. I may throw up on you. Be right back. I'm fine with my old outfit. No capes! Excuse me? No capes! I'm Bruce Nolan for Eyewitness News. Back to you, f***ers! You broke your little ships. I have never told you how much I hate sitting on that couch staring at the TV like we're already dead. You're the one that's gone from being a chartered accountant, Charlton Heston! I'm not a chartered accountant! Well, you look like one! You're quasi-evil. You're semi-evil. You're the margarine of evil. You're the Diet Coke of evil. Just one calorie, not evil enough. You're strong, sturdy ankles. You're proud, peasant arches. Clean your toes with my tongue. Let's hear it for my boy A-Train! <laughs> All right! Go f*** yourself, San Diego. When you were talking about how much you hated your job, you meant, you meant this job. Well, have fun with your terrible jobs. I gotta go clean the executive conference room and eat some lobster ravioli. Peace. Oh, fuck it. How's the peeping? Tommy. How's the peeping? I mean, just when you think this sh can't get any more horrible. You're blowing away a fleeing suspect with my 44 Magnum. 
used to be everything to me. This is our chance. Every choice is a chance, fellas. Ocean land. Yeah. So, get this, the dolphins. Who, oh, curiously enough, had long known of the impending destruction of the planet Earth. Ah. Ah. Yeah, as a bowler, I know that right about now, your bladder feels like an overstuffed vacuum cleaner bag. You know what I was thinking about on my run over here? Chocolate lava cake. Hey, come on. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. Family. I'll always be watching over you. Always watching. Where'd you go? I, I had to poop. Ask for the sergeant's big pen and fling it 26 yards right into the asshole's eyeball. <clears throat> dead shot, dead shooter. What's your point? My point is that the pen is mightier than the sword. Did you have sex with him? But probably not the way you're thinking. Please. That baby is an accessory. To murder. You got the right to remain silent, bitch. You will honor me the way a wife is required to honor a husband. You played my butt like jazz. You like jazz? I see you. I see you. Yeah, that's me, all right. And the guy standing next to me is President Gerald Ford. Sorry, I don't... You don't get it, do you? I don't want to be your stupid quarterback. I quit! I would like you to take this in the constructive spirit that it is intended. I'm gonna rip the eyes out of your head now and piss at your dead skull! Okay. Are my teeth not white enough? Or like the Great Falls is the bedrock of my life eroding beneath me! Nope. You're off, bro. Go again. You gotta be fing kidding. Do you have something you'd like to share? The Iceman cometh. Don't call me stupid. Oh, right! To call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people! You play ball like a girl! What would you say your trademark is if you have one? Well, I guess the look I'm best known for is blue steel. What's that look like? So they thought it was you up there, but it was really Becca. A bit deceptive, <laughs> isn't it? You pompous, stuck up, snot nosed, English giant, twerp, scumbag, f face, dickhead, asshole. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. Welcome to the party, pal. I didn't realize you were such a cigar aficionado. <laughs> I don't smoke. It's a disgusting habit. Now let's see if you can defend yourself. You sweat from a baboon's balls. Yeah, I got it. Special 2016 Comic-Con edition? Where they make like a few hundred of these? There's a snake in my boot. Welcome, Martini. Chicken or stirred? Do I look like I give a damn? The Sea King will never know. You won't tell him. I won't tell him. I will stay Where? in one piece. Monique. Not sure I deserve that. Why don't you, uh, go have a smoke or something, okay? I got this. Oh, and, uh, you guys. Good job. You're a hunter, meaning you're whatever the job you're doing today. It was either bird watching or alcoholism, so. Booze and penicillin. I mean, why the hell would I ever help you? Because that's what heroes do. I'm a superhero want to make out why am i sweating so much because you're feeling it 